Hello, Pentax Tips here. Today I'm going to show you probably not the best way to scan your 35mm film. I'm going to show you a way to digitize your 35mm negatives with relatively common Pentax equipment. An M42 bellows with slide copier, an M42 decay mount adapter, a K70, and a super tachymar 55mm f1.8. I am definitely not saying this is the best way to digitize your images, as there are dedicated scanners and other rig setup options to complete this process. In fact, this way is far from what many would call perfect, capturing only a portion of the image. But the results, for me, fall into the realm of good enough for a lot of my snapshot photography, and I'd like to share those results and maybe you can learn from my mistakes. First, I'll demonstrate the process, then I'll discuss some of the problems with the method, and then I'll show you some of the results in post-production. Let's go for it. I'll have my camera set up to shoot with lenses without an aperture ring. See the video here on how to complete that process with the K70. I'll set my camera up with the M42 to K-mount adapter and screw on the bellows adapter. Attach the camera to the bellows and tighten the screw to secure the camera in place. We're going to use the Super Tachymar 55mm f1.8. There's a section explaining this lens choice in the problems chapter later on. For our purposes, we will need a bellows length at its very default minimum at 3.73cm. This will give us our desired maximum subject size of 5.5cm. So this will require a sensor to subject distance of 22.9cm. This means our slide copier will have to make up a lot of distance we will have to extend our slide copier to its very maximum possible length to achieve the total length of 22.9 centimeters. Securing it in place right at the end with this little set screw. You will also notice that the manual states to set the lens distance scale to infinity. I also stop down the lens substantially to acquire a deeper plane of focus, but I want to be cautious of overdoing it, causing diffraction issues. You can load film into the slide copier two ways. One, by flipping open the front and placing the film into the copier, or we can slip the film into the slide while the copier is closed. You may now fiddle with the dials until you get the best reproduction size and focus. Turning on focus peaking will help with the manual focus and adjusting involved. For settings, I'll prefer my LCD panel with live view shooting, and I'll set my camera in aperture priority mode with ISO 100 for the cleanest reproductions. I'll also put on a two second timer to remove any shake that might be occurring. Now be sure to orientate not only the camera's roll by rotating it until you see straight lines, but also the slide copier's height relative to the camera. The holder can be adjusted by moving it up or down to the center of the film as much as possible. However, with this process, the capture size is a tad smaller than the film, so you'll have to somewhat compensate and center the frame for the expected mini crop. Now you can fire away and simply pull the film through the slide copier to the next frame. Using this process, you can get through a full 36 frame roll of film in just under 4 minutes. Okay, now the problems. Mainly, not all cameras can be used for this process because the bottom of the camera below the mount may be too bulky, prohibiting a flush connection with the bellows. I can verify that my K70 and my K5 will fit, however, my K3 Mark III will not fit, and I am certain that a K1 will not fit as well. I've heard people may try to include a small extension ring mounted on the front of the camera to acquire the clearance. However, adding that distance to the bellows increases the magnification as well, which may not be a, a good thing in this case when we're trying to achieve a one-on-one -on -one reproduction. Another major problem is the lens and bellows physical limitations. First off, one of the sort of problems that I ran into was the rounding error for APS-C to a full frame equivalency. We have 35 millimeter film, which height is actually 24 millimeters without the perforations, and its length is 36 millimeters long. I always used a 1.5 times multiplier, making our equivalent length requirement to be 54 millimeters long, which actually would be pretty dandy in this case. But if we look up the exact size of the K70's APS-C sensor, we get a length of 23 and a half millimeters. And if we do the math on that, makes a conversion factor of 1.531914 and so on. Or it's a little bit more than the traditionally rounded 1.5 times multiplier, making our one-to-one -one reproduction Production requirement of a 36 millimeter frame length 
go up ever so slightly to 55.1489 whatever millimeters. Okay, so now we need to find a lens that can cover that length. The bellows manual contains reproduction charts, and we can start looking for a lens that might best suit our purposes. We see columns for our bellows length, our subject size, the film to subject distance, the magnification, and the exposure factor. Again, we need to cover a length of 55.14 millimeter, or just over 5.5 centimeters, to get a one-to-one -one subject size reproduction on our APS-C sensor. So let's start looking for that. You can see the Super Tachymar 50mm f1.4 has a maximum subject size of only 4.9 centimeters. Won't work for us. Super Tach 55mm 1.8 has a subject size of 5.5mm, and so our requirement is just slightly larger than that. But that's a pretty close option for us. The Super Tachymar 35mm f3.5 only has a maximum subject size of 3.4 centimeters. Again, too small. Now the Super Tachymar 85mm f1.9 does have a sufficient subject size coverage at 8.2 centimeters. However, if we look to the film to subject distance, in our case that's the sensor to subject distance, that requires a distance of more than 39 centimeters, which using our bellows is too great of a distance. Even with the camera at the furthest distance back and the slide copier to its maximum distance, the bellow length isn't the issue. At the approximate length required for this one-on-one -on -one reproduction, is well within the limits of our bellows capacity. However, the extra distance required to get the correct film to subject distance is greater than the slide copier's maximum length. Again, I don't think this lens will work for us. The Super Tachymar 105 f2.8 does have a sufficient coverage for the subject size. However, the film to subject distance, again, is too great for the capacity of our bellows unit. And the same goes for the Super Tachymar 135mm f3.5, requiring more than 60 some centimeters to acquire our goal. We would require more than 40 centimeters with the Bellows Tachymar 100mm f4, again, too long for our Bellows unit. And the Macro Tachymar 50mm f4 doesn't cover our subject size at only 5 centimeters. And those are all the reproduction charts that we get with this manual anyway. And so we are looking at the Super Tachymar 55mm f1.8 as being our best option, but insufficient to capture the entire 35mm frame. Pretty close though. Good enough, right? Before we get to post-production, I'll mention I used a light board, but ambient light works as well. You just need to have a little bit longer of a shutter speed to complete the process. In addition, though, you'll, you'll get some potential changing ambient conditions, say if like a cloud covers the sun. So then you might not get consistent exposures over time. Using a light board may help get more consistent scans over time. Now let's look at some results in post-production. First off, we need to reverse the negative so that we are producing a positive black and white image. There are much better ways to complete this process, but again, good enough for me, we can go to the tone curve and adjust the black and white points to be on the opposite side of the chart. This will effectively make all blacks white and all whites black. The major issue with this is that all the sliders will now be reversed, but keeping that in mind, we can still adjust our images accordingly. Or if you really don't like the reverse sliders, you can export your image as a TIFF, and then re-import that TIFF. Now your sliders will work as expected, and you can work up your images as you would normally. Another major problem occurs during image acquisition complacency, uh, and not ensuring that each and every shot is taken within the bounds of the sensor image. In this case, a small crop can remove the blacked out portion of the frame caused by the copy slider uh, being misoriented. However, my conclusions are that if you have the gear and are interested in putting in the work, then you could totally go ahead and scan your images this way. However, if you're requiring a more permanent solution with perfect results, uh, then shooting with an APS-C camera using M42 bellows and a slide copier isn't the answer for you. Regardless, I hope you learned from my mistakes. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this content. And if you want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Thanks.